Melissa Kelly. I'm the senior sports or senior director for school sports programming. Uh, I will be working with Sam Hodap uh, as the venue manager for Bocce this year, and as well Brian Gehring, who is a volunteer. Uh, many of you have worked with Sam for several years, uh, and Brian um, as well last year and uh, years prior. Uh, I look forward to meeting many of you. Uh, I've met many of you over the years. Um, and hopefully, please feel free to introduce yourself uh, if I see you at qualifiers in the season and then certainly at summer games as well. So without any further ado, Mike, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I am going to mute the line as to best uh, and efficiently go through the presentation. You will have an opportunity at the end of the presentation to ask any questions. So if anything comes to mind as we go through the material, please just jot yourself a note and um, certainly present that to us uh, during that opportunity. Presentation mode is now enabled. This session is being recorded, so please know that uh, we will post it via YouTube for any coaches that may have not had the opportunity to join us this evening. We certainly do not want them to miss out on the material. So here we go. Um, this evening we are going to go through the rules updates and reminders, a list of qualifiers and the qualifying expectations in order to make sure that all um, both athletes and unified partners uh, participate in the prerequisite qualifiers for this uh, summer games. Deadlines and dates, uh, which more specifically pertain to forms. Resources um, uh, pertaining to bocce and you know, coaching and preparing your, your um, athletes. And then paperwork entries to make sure we're all on the same page and have the same expectations with establishing assessment or divisioning scores. Uh, the entries, allocations, and then as well uh, the coach certifications. And we will finish up with the Q&A opportunity. The Summer Games related deadlines. The train registration deadline. So this is uh, the date in which we need to know uh, at the state office exactly what, who is participating in your season. So this includes athletes, unified partners, coaches, volunteers, so on and so forth. This, in essence, makes those individuals eligible to attend summer games. Anyone who is not submitted during this period uh, by the state uh, know that they will not be eligible to attend summer games or compete. The team roster and team assessment due dates, um, we will gather all assessment um, scores for each individual player during this time. Uh, that date is, is uh, excuse me, April 23rd. So we as well need to make sure that we have a proper assessment score for each individual player. Uh, and um, please know that it would not be a combined score. So we'll, more to come on that, exactly how to administer those assessments. Last date for missing forms to be submitted to Special Olympics Maryland headquarters. So this is the date in which we need to make sure that we have every uh, volunteer application as well uh, athlete medical or athlete application. Um, this we need to make sure that we have on file. It is a prerequisite form before anyone starts the training season and we realize that programs commonly collect these and keep them on hand, but we most certainly need to do our due diligence. Uh, at the state office to ensure that we have a copy on file as well. Uh, as well, we must have all head coaches uh, meet the certification requirements for each sport, and more to come on that uh, later in the presentation. Competition registration deadline. This is when your, uh, each local program has someone who will manage the GMS or games management software or system. Uh, and those individuals will register your players and bocce and particularly um, their individual, their events um, 
most commonly in bocce, they will register for two events, and then as well any coaches, uh, chaperones, so on and so, so forth. So please know that that is the deadline uh, regarding that. And then the last date to update scores, this is actually only ap applicable to aquatics and athletics, so please disregard that last note. Please note, too, that these deadlines um, are um, deadlines in which we have imposed to, to the local program, so certainly with the uh, GMS manager and their, the astonishing uh, responsibilities with making sure that um, at times uh, several athletes, unified partners, and coaches are entered into GMS properly, they may apply their own deadlines to make sure that they meet the announced deadlines from our office. So please adhere to their deadlines more so than ours. Eligibility. <clears throat> Every player must compete in a minimum of two qualifiers. Um, we have a list of qualifiers and we are looking to establish more in the schedule if you're interested in hosting one. Uh, the competition um, best prepares the players uh, to compete and gets them acclimated to the competition venue, obviously. Um, and they may also, it's important to know, they may also compete in any bocce event. Many of the qualifiers offer um, only doubles competition because singles will just be um, an, a remarkable uh, and ambitious uh, undertaking if we offered, uh, for instance, 20 minutes uh, singles matches for everyone. It just simply would be impossible to have everyone or accommodate everyone to qualify them statewide before the summer games. So uh, it's simply that your players need to attend two qualifiers before summer games and they must be sanctioned qualifiers. And like I said, there is a list of sanctioned qualifiers uh, later in the presentation. Special needs and accommodations. Uh, please know as well the GMS manager or your area director, um, if you don't know who that person is, please find out. Uh, it's to your benefit. Please know that you will, uh, it is necessary that you report any accommodations, be it for visual impairment, physical impairment, so on and so forth. Please make sure that that person knows and he or she, the GM, GMS manager that is, can enter it properly into our system so we have note of that as we um, uh, prepare the venue, obviously, and set the schedule. Please do not assume that everyone knows. Um, we know what we have some well-tenured athletes in bocce, uh, but please know certainly that it's not uh, well-known by everyone, and we want to make sure we have appropriate record of it. Events. At Summer Games, we will offer uh, continue to offer singles, doubles, both traditional and unified, and then team, both traditional and unified. The athletes may enter singles and then as well doubles or four-person team, either, again, traditional or unified. The qualifying assessment score must be reported for each player, including unified partners. The qualifying score will be calculated according to the player assessments for divisioning. And if you bear with me a moment, I will bring up that screen so that I can ask Sam to talk that through. Sam, are you on? Yeah, can you hear me? Yep, we're good. Great. Okay. Whenever... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Whenever you're ready. Sorry. Okay, right, Bob. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm excited for another season of Bocce. Uh, we're going to talk through real quickly the player assessment for divisioning. Uh, the purpose of the divisioning process is that at state games we can division athletes against individuals or teams of a comparable ability. Uh, bocce is very much a finesse, a skill sport. Uh, this process gives us the best possible quantitative measure of an athlete's ability. Uh, so we're going to talk real through the step-by-step -step, uh, process that you use. It's a relatively simple process um, whereby you get a, uh, a total score for each athlete measuring their uh, uh, ability to get as close as possible. So 
Real quick, the points of emphasis, the player is going to be rolling all eight balls, um, targeting at three separate spots, the 20-foot, the 30-foot, and the 40-foot line. Uh, as the coach, the process is that each individual goes into the court. The Polina is placed at the middle line on half court, so 30 feet from the backboard of the court. The athlete rolls all eight balls. You measure the three closest out of those eight. Um, all distances must be in inches. Please help us out. It's very difficult to make any conversions if they're done in anything but inches. Um, all distances in total inches round up to the nearest uh, inch. Quick note on that: as you play, excuse me, as you place the ball, and the athlete rolls all eight uh, balls, four red, four green. If they hit the polina, that's great. Um, that's a good marker of their ability. But before they roll the next ball, replace the polina to the midpoint of the line they're on. So if they're on the 30 foot and halfway through, they hit the polina, replace the polina before they roll the next ball. After they roll all eight, just going to measure the three closest balls and record their distances in, in, in inches. After you get the first three scores at 30 feet, going to go ahead and replace the polina at the 40 foot line, which is halfway between the mid-court line and the far foul line if you have a marked court. Uh, same process, the player is going to roll all eight balls, and uh, if they hit the polina, it will be replaced. At the end of all eight, the coach is going to measure only the three closest and record their distances in inches, uh, after which return all eight balls to the player, and same deal for the 50-foot line, which is the opposite foot foul line. Players are going to roll all eight balls. The coach is going to measure uh, the three closest in inches. The uh, assessment score, the divisioning score for each individual, is the total of those nine measurements. The three closest at 30 feet, the three closest at 40 feet, and the three closest at 50 feet. That total will be their individual score. Um, and when we're going into doubles and teams, it's simply a sum of the individuals on the team. Thank you, Sam. Yep. Um, you will receive a copy of this document in the follow-up email, as I mentioned. If you have any questions about this, we'll also direct you to your respective regional director, um, excuse me, regional sports director, and then it also includes a diagram uh, with regard to the 30-foot uh, line uh, where uh, approximately the 40-foot line would be and then the 50-foot line. So um, as uh, all of you know, it should go without saying, but I'll go ahead and emphasize it, that the, this process is absolutely paramount in ensuring that our division process and fair play uh, is uh, uh, offered to our athletes. Um, so please make sure that you do this um, with uh, the utmost integrity and make sure you report the appropriate uh, scores to your GMS manager. If you have any questions about that, please, again, uh, jot yourself a note and we will uh, take those at the end of the presentation. Please bear with me as I resort back to the PowerPoint. Um, uh, with regard to court access, um, we certainly want to provide the opportunity to highlight our players at all times. With that, uh, we need to also make sure that they are um, performing uh, under their own uh, uh, accord and uh, through their own capability. So with that, we will have uh, proximity control, uh, I like to call it, in which we will not allow any um, uh, coaches or delegation volunteers, if you will, beyond a certain point on the field. Uh, Sam and his um, Cohorts at the venue have done a great job in providing uh, clear markings, and we will continue to maintain that same uh, case uh, going forward. If you have any questions or concerns regarding that, um, please do let us know. But it's worked quite well in years past, and we continue. We intend to continue with that same practice going forward. Uh, with that said, the players may uh, go to consult one's coach uh, in between frames and in between throws. However, if it whatsoever uh, delays play at all, um, we will uh, address that uh, on-site 
through um, the appropriate uh, uh, acts. So please make sure we want to get as many throws in as possible, and we don't want to delay play. I think we're on the, all on the same page with that. Um, as well, uh, please know that no discussion with any players is allowed once he or she steps on, on the court without, um, without, um, con without any um, regard. With, so please uh, adhere to that as well. With regard to the throws, uh, a player may grip the ball over with an overhanded, uh, inverted grip, if you will, with their palm on top of the ball or underhanded. They will deliver the ball, uh, preferably with one hand, but we will allow two hands, certainly. And um, the ball is to be thrown and finished inside the court of play. Uh, this would include hitting uh, a legal throw is uh, hitting the backboard and missing any ball, including the Polina. So if one throws the ball and it does not ricochet whatsoever, that is a legal throw and is permissible. All measurements will be taken from inside the bocce ball, um, so the inner point of the bocce ball to the top center of the Polina. Uh, and uh, that is the same measuring practice which should be implemented in your divisioning assessment uh, drill that Sam just covered. Um, players with uh, manual dexterity uh, considerations and uh, similar gross motor ability concerns, uh, we will once again allow for the lighter weight balls, which are of a Nerf consistency um, and much lighter. Uh, we will allow those. However, it must be um, appropriate for those athletes, and in essence, uh, they must be unable to throw this standard uh, bocce ball. So please, uh, we let us know, and that needs to be a notation in your GMS registration. So please make sure that your GMS manager is aware of that and can make that notation. Um, if there are any new players who will need the, uh, so those who did not compete, so those who did not compete in 2014 are new to the program or uh, have returned to bocce and are uh, more appropriately would would more appropriately benefit from the lighter weight ball. Please let um, either Sam or Sam and I both know that that is the case, and we will work with the area director to ensure that that person is evaluated and, um, in essence, signed off on to make sure that that person is most appropriate to use the lighter weight balls. Uh, these athletes. Uh, and then, as well, in teams or doubles, will be divisioned ex will not be excuse me divisioned exclusively. Exclusively, um, they will be divisioned with the um, total group and compete potentially compete against those using the standard bocce balls. On to the game. Uh, the first player, uh, whoever wins the coin toss. Uh, will throw the Polina and attempt to have it come to rest between the half court line and the opposite foot fault line. Uh, the player will have, uh, if he or she is not successful in doing so, the player will have two additional attempts. If that player is not successful in their three attempts, the opponent will have one attempt to place uh, the bocce, excuse me, the polina within the designated parameter of the half court to the opposite foot fault line. If the opponent has uh, is unsuccessful in doing so, the official will then place the polina at the 50 foot line, which is the opposite foot fault line, and the original or initial thrower uh, will have the first opportunity to throw the bocce ball. If the polina goes out of bounds. Uh, the following will occur. The frame is over the ball. Balls are returned to the same side, and a new frame is started. Who wins? Uh, we will play two for singles, 12 points, or the predetermined uh, time limit, whichever comes first, for doubles as well. Per Special Olympics Incorporated rules is uh, 12 points, and then four-person teams will play to 16 points, or again, the expiration of the uh, designated time limit. Uh, please know that we are not in a position as yet to establish the time limit. Um, we have 
Uh, certainly want to make the matches as long as possible, but certainly we want to get as many matches in as necessary to allow for everyone to have their competitive opportunity, obviously. And then as well as you attend qualifiers, the same holds true in that the tournament director does have the discretion to fluctuate um, or determine the time limit for the entire tournament. So um, I misspoke in that it should not fluctuate throughout the tournament. It should be a designated time period and hold true for the entire event at the qualifier as well. Doubles or four-person team. The athletes and unified partners will roll from the same end. Um, any teammates can roll the ball at any delivery, either um, uh, player A throwing one ball, player A throwing again the second ball, and then player B throwing the, sec excuse me, the third and fourth ball. Uh, they do not have to alternate. Uh, they will uh, walk back from one end of the a frame, excuse me, one end of the court to the other between each frame. Uh, if there are mobility concerns, uh, we may, and if it is agreeable by both coaches and teams, uh, we may uh, not require the um, alternating of ends of the court. So uh, that will be an on-site adjustment. Again, uh, even more of a reason to notate any accommodations that need to be made. So we are well aware of that in advance and can be um, uh, 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 eager and uh, certainly talk through that with your opposing coach if necessary. Foul lines will be enforced. The exact interpretation of that, no one's, uh, one's foot may not touch the foul line whatsoever. So a touch of the foul line with one's tip of their foot uh, it will be uh, considered a foul and uh, will uh, be, the ball will be picked up. Uh, with regard, uh, further consideration to the time allocation, buffer time is uh, added into the schedule as we are capable. So that will be time in which we can allow for accommodations for athletes with special needs um, and then uh, especially so with consideration for them to um, uh, alternate ends of the court, and we cer certainly do not want for that to adversely affect the schedule at all. Um, and please know that the competition director, so Sam and I, if there are any accommodations that we do not deem necessary to um, accommodate, um, we will do our best to, to make every con we will make every consideration and make every accommodation that is fair, uh, but if we deem it's not necessary uh, or unfair in competition, uh, we do have the discretion to disallow. Uniform requirements. Um, I'm not sure who would wear long pants, but long pants are uh, appropriate uh, or short, so golf or tennis style. Uh, jeans, running shorts, or short shorts, uh, which would be those um, far up from the kneecap are not permissible whatsoever. Athlete's shoes uh, do that, do, that do not damage or harm the playing surface are required, so sneakers are great. Uh, I don't know that we've had many um, uh, issues with footwear. Please obviously make sure that they are comfortable uh, as they will be standing for some time uh, during the match. Hats as well are permissible, provided per Special Olympics rules. They do not have indications of sponsorship or corporate logos. Collared shirts are required as was implemented in 2012. Alternates for doubles and teams. Um, many of the players will have already been uh, registered for the event, so there may not be many alternates available to your delegation in bocce. Uh, but if that is not the case, please know that you need to register, officially register any alternate within your delegation as an alternate within Bocce uh, for that particular event. So um, Jane Doe needs to be registered as an alternate for uh, Bocce doubles, um, and then uh, they as well should meet the qualifying requirements. If there are any further questions about that, uh, please uh, feel free to ask at the end of the session. If there is the case, uh, which is most common, in that a player 
uh, is absent or scratched and an alternate is not available, then the remaining or the attending team member, regardless if it's double team or team, uh, may continue to play. However, the balls that were uh, designated for the absent player will not be thrown and are not certainly then eligible for points. Substitutions, um, we will uh, not, not allow substitutions with the exception of a medical emergency or prior approval from uh, Sam or myself. Qualifiers. Um, the qualifiers, as I mentioned briefly earlier in the presentation, are an opportunity for the players to become more accustomed to the competition environment and as well test their skills. You coaches um, have been working with them uh, not only on their skills of uh, target practice and um, uh, throwing whatsoever, but also strategic placement of the ball. As Sam said, the game of bocce is very much a game of finesse, and uh, this would be an opportunity for your players to put their skills both on the court and mentally to practice. Um, uh, the qualifiers you attend should closely need to closely emulate the summer games competition and then as well follow every rule um, and then have qualified officials. Uh, you will be expected to wear or your players will be expected to wear their appropriate uniform. Uh, certainly some other expectations in that uh, more so for the host county is that medical personnel is on site. There are three or more, ideally three or more counties. Uh, the depth of competition would be much better than um, doing a, a two area county uh, competition. So uh, that is definitely ideal. And then as well, the sanction form must be submitted um, to the area leadership, uh, your area director or his or her designee, who will then pass it on to Special Olympics Maryland headquarters at least 30 days in advance for approval. Uh, these aforementioned uh, expectations, uh, any uh, uh, non-compliance with these expectations could nullify your event status as a qualifier. Qualifying for the state meet, again, uh, they, all bocce players must compete in a minimum of two sanctioned qualifiers, preferably of three or more uh, programs, and we do not need to uh, review the softball and cheerleading. Uh, this is the current list of qualifiers we have on file so far. So again, we are looking to build this offering. Um, certainly, if we need to qualify as many bocce players as we anticipate, um, the more qualifiers, the better. So please let us know if you have any intention of hosting a qualifier so that we can properly advertise it to all of the coaches. Um, again, you will receive a copy of this presentation uh, and then as well the, uh, the listing of the uh, qualifiers that have been sanctioned and are considered opportunities for you to have your players um, qualify for summer games. Uh, this is just a quick shot of the uh, sanction form, uh, and it goes directly to Mike Zarnowski, the senior director for the community program. Um, and he will, he's great about approving it and getting back to the uh, host to ensure um, proper announcement. And then a note regarding the pre-competition webinar. Uh, please do take the time, just a couple minutes, as you did with this webinar, to click on this live link and ensure that you are properly registered for the pre-competition webinar, which will be hosted on Wednesday, May 27th at 8 p.m. Um, and then, uh, as well, I'm sure many of you are familiar, it, you can choose to populate your calendar, and you will also receive email reminders with regard to uh, the timeline there. So mark the date now and uh, register as soon as possible. Coaches certification. At this point, I will turn it over to Mike to review the coaches certification segment. Uh, thank you, Melissa. Uh, uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. Uh, before we go to coach head coach certification, one 
uh, note back with the qualifiers as well. Uh, please do keep in mind that uh, to host a qualifier does not mean that you have to have it open to everybody and be able to handle uh, you know, uh, people from 10 different counties or uh, whatever the case may be. A qualifier can be um, uh, limited in size. Uh, several of the ones that are on that list are limited in terms of um, uh, the, um, oh, I, I'm sorry, Melissa, I didn't know you were going to have me, I thought you were going to click through for me. That's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Would you like me to? Um, no, I'll go ahead and click through here. Uh, but anyhow, on the, um, uh, sorry, I was, wasn't all the way up to speed at that, uh, at that, uh, at that particular slide. Um, but anyway, the, um, the qualifiers, you, you can certainly have a limit in terms of the number of people who you can uh, accommodate. Uh, as I uh, started to say, several of the uh, qualifiers on the list um, are certainly at that capacity. Uh, in addition, uh, while it's ideal to have three or more, uh, you could also uh, do a qualifier uh, of having um, you know, in inviting a team from, an, from your nearby county uh, to come and to your practice and you go to their practice. Um, uh, the one other comment on qualifiers is the minimum is two. Uh, we certainly hope that everyone uh, looks for a maximum number of opportunities. That's where uh, the athletes really get a good sense of how to play the sport of bocce and uh, would look forward to, uh, uh, to seeing folks in as many different competitions as possible. So uh, now on to head coach certification. Um, hopefully all of you received back in November uh, or early December uh, an update on this. Uh, Special Olympics Maryland, and uh, this is not a replacement of, or of the four different webinars that we've done uh, on head coach certification. I just want to hit the highlights here. Uh, when you get this, uh, the uh, slides, uh, it will, and, and the, uh, the link to the recording for, the, uh, for tonight's session uh, that will go out to all bocce coaches uh, from last year and this year. Uh, there will also be a link to the recordings of the or the recording of the final um, uh, coach certification uh, webinar. Uh, so uh, again, I just want to put a couple reminders here and such. Um, first of all, uh, coach certification is a long-standing policy for Special Olympics, not just Special Olympics Maryland, Special Olympics in general. Uh, at least 25 years. Uh, while it's been a policy in place, uh, Special Olympics Maryland has not uh, enforced it. Uh, until uh, recently for a variety of reasons, um, uh, but several things have, have uh, happened recently both that uh, we are much uh, better equipped uh, and able to track who is certified and who is not uh, and uh, provide that information. Actually, uh, we'll be doing a webinar for your GMS managers in the near future so they can look up that information themselves. Uh, but also the, um, uh, the means by which a person can renew their certification uh, or gain certification um, have become uh, significantly more flexible. So uh, for more information on that, please do look at the, um, the, the webinar. Uh, in addition, uh, as is noted here, uh, this week, uh, likely tomorrow, Saturday at the latest, uh, we'll be sending out another update. We sent an update of listing all of the trainings that we had on record as well uh, that coaches have taken, as well as all of the uh, certifications that we had was it's, uh, sent out uh, by area, so all of the Anne Arundel coaches will get the information for Anne Arundel County uh, and so on down the line. Um, that will go out later this week, uh, tomorrow or Saturday, uh, along with the various learning opportunities that are there. Um, so you can, uh, you can see where you're at. Um, but as uh, Melissa had alluded to or indicated back when we were looking at deadlines, um, the head coaches must have their certification uh, for their summer game sports. Uh, in place or uh, updated by uh, May 4th, which is the same date as missing forms. Uh, who is the head coach? Uh, and I should also say we rolled this out with basketball, so we're, we're new in the process uh, for this. Um, basketball, uh, I'm sorry, for, for bocce, there is a minimum of one head coach for your bocce delegation. You can certainly have more, but in order to bring a team to bocce, the person who is designated as your head coach uh, for summer games for bocce must be certified. Um, their certification is valid for up to three years, uh, and again, the listing of the opportunities will be sent out um, uh, in the next day or two. In, uh, in a nutshell, if you have a previous Special Olympic Sports certification in bocce, 
Um, and we'll go back, and as uh, if you've taken a, a bocce course as far back uh, as bocce was introduced, 10 years, 15 years, uh, we'll count that as having an existing uh, certification, and you can uh, renew that certification simply by uh, completing one uh, general uh, course or learning opportunity or one uh, specific to bocce. Um, Again, the whole purpose here is to have our coaches continually improving their skills, and, uh, and that's one of the pieces of feedback that we've gotten regularly from athletes, that they want their coaches to continually get better, uh, and uh, that's one of the drivers here. So if you already have a certification or you've already taken the course, uh, at any point in the past, uh, that's how you can renew. I would also say when you see the list of trainings, if you believe you have taken a course or have been certified in the past and it is not listed there, um, let us know. Uh, we had asked on the original distribution that everyone get back to us. I believe it was by January 31st. Uh, we found that uh, people being people, uh, a lot of people didn't look at it if it wasn't immediately urgent for them. And uh, so we've gotten recently, as we've moved into the summer game sport, several folks who have, um, who have indicated uh, their previous participation. So we are going to go ahead and uh, extend that until uh, June 30th that will allow you uh, to tell us or to, to um, uh, provide us with information on a previous certification or a previous course. Bottom line is we need to kind of close that at a certain point so we know what our universe is and move forward. Um, but uh, we'll give that opportunity to you. Um, and instructions on that will be included in the, uh, the email that goes out to all uh, coaches who participated uh, in any sport in the last two years. If you're a coach who does not have any uh, previous Special Olympic certification in bocce, it's a two-step process. Um, one is uh, you need to either take coaching Special Olympics athletes or principles of coaching. Uh, both are available as online options as well as live options, uh, but you need to take that plus a sports-specific session on bocce. Um, so uh, at some point in the future, potentially as soon as 2016, uh, we'll actually be enforcing the policy as it is written, which is for all coaches, not just head coaches. Uh, we're phasing it in with head coaches right now. Um, uh, so if you have other coaches who um, uh, will be uh, with you, we strongly encourage them to uh, also look at uh, getting their certification now. It's good for three years. The note at the bottom there, uh, there is also now, uh, we received this from uh, Special Olympics North America. That's what SONA stands for. Um, uh, Special Olympics North America has added a requirement uh, that all coaches have a um, certification or a con training in concussion, uh, recognizing concussion awareness and also treatment of concussions. Um, it's a very smart move for the safety of all athletes. It's also a requirement um, uh, for our insurance provider as well. Uh, so that's being phased in uh, and rolled out throughout 2015. Uh, bottom line is we need to have all coaches to have completed that by the end of 2015. Uh, at an area director's meeting that will be held on April 18th, we'll be providing our um, information to the area directors in how the process will work, how we'll roll it out, and then shortly thereafter, um, I won't say that same day or the next day, depends upon the feedback from the area directors. We may make some tweaks to it, uh, but shortly thereafter we'll send out the information uh, to all coaches so that you have that information. Uh, the trainings that are available for that from CDC, uh, from the Centers of, uh, for Disease Control, and the National Federation of High School Sports um, are free online uh, and available, and we have some other options as well. In terms of uh, scheduled uh, coach uh, trainings, uh, we have several up here. We are looking to schedule some bocce uh, sessions. Uh, we'll work with uh, Melissa and Sam uh, to get a couple that are online. They're not posted here right now. Uh, but we are also looking to host additional live ones, whether coaching Special Olympics athletes or a bocce course. Uh, we will, um, if you're interested, uh, all we ask is the space. Um, potentially, if you have someone with expertise, we can include them as a clinician, uh, but we can uh, uh, pull together the necessary clinicians for that as we need to. Um, but we also ask that there be a commitment to have at least five to seven participants. Live trainings of this type uh, really, if there's fewer than five to seven uh, participants, they really do not work well. Um, so we'll ask for that commitment. If you're interested, um, you, know, you can even do it. I mean, they typically last two to three hours. They can be done within the context or around your training program as well. And we can just invite folks from other neighboring areas 
Uh, but if you're interested, please contact your regional sports director, um, uh, who I think the contact information is in here. If not, it will certainly be in the email that goes out uh, following this session, um, and they can make those arrangements. We mentioned also about online training as an option uh, through ASEP. That's the American Sports Education Program. Uh, you'll see several of the, these are the, um, uh, the courses that are available. Uh, while there are online courses for all four of the other summer game sports, unfortunately there is not through ASEP an online course specifically to bocce. Uh, there are several, however, uh, general courses that are listed there, coaching Special Olympics athletes, so on down the line. Special Olympics Maryland will provide a subsidy to help cover some of the cost uh, of these programs or of these uh, courses, uh, in essence about $20 or up to $20. Uh, that is done as a reimbursement after uh, the coach has uh, completed, successfully completed the course. So you need to provide the information that you, uh, that you get from ASEP uh, indicating that you've successfully completed the course and, and requesting the reimbursement, and then we can go through that. Instructions on that will be provided when the stuff goes out in the next day or two. Um, that said, um, uh, Melissa, I'll just take this for a moment. Um, Melissa indicated and talked uh, briefly about the forms and such. And as a reminder that no one can participate in any Special Olympics program without a valid medical or volunteer application. And there are no exceptions to that policy. There's no grace period of uh, you get a, you know, two practices before you um, uh, without a medical. There is no exception at all. They need, if an athlete doesn't have a medical or a volunteer doesn't have a volunteer app, when they show up to your practice, you got to have them sit uh, and not participate. Um, it's rough, but it is absolutely required. Uh, many of you know that I'm also a volunteer coach for track and soccer, and we're just up, uh, we we apply this um, in in the programs in Baltimore County that I work with uh, directly, uh, and we're just up front with folks and uh, people uh, understand. So uh, following this, we're not going to go through all the slides, uh, but following this are all the different forms and some explanation about um, submission and so on down the line. We've gone through those in depth. Uh, for the last year and a half, and we're not going to go in through and spend that time again. So uh, that said, uh, Melissa, is there, I forget, is there anything at the end of all these form slides? Uh, no, nothing comes to mind. Uh, so I, with that, I will unmute everyone's line, and we will open the uh, opportunity for questions. Presentation mode is now disabled. Um, this is Abby from Howard County. I do have some questions. Um, you said to put in the assess the scores for the assessments. Yes. For training. I mean, uh, Mike, is that due at the t at the time of training or during no. the? I'm, I'm sorry, I should have jumped in when you were talking about that. That's, that assessment score that was on that that slide that had the deadlines was a slide uh, that applies to all summer game sports. Your assessment scores are due uh, by the competition deadline. The um, the that that one line there was specifically only about softball. Okay, so. When all the correct okay um, the other thing we've talked about over the years is <laughs> the um, total score for each athlete we had talked about whether they were you know long or short and it really comes into play on the ones that have the very high numbers <laughs> and I was wondering if that, um, discussion was made for changes this year to indicate whether they're a long throw or a short throw? Um, I will have to defer to Mike or Sam on that. I'm not certain of the uh, historical value. And uh, um, I, uh, hey, I'm going to go ahead. to Sam. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say that uh, that's probably a good note to make when you input their qualifying scores into GMS. Okay. Uh, it's, it's not something that we can really put a number on, but if you have an athlete that has a high score, but they, they for the life of them, can't get it past the 40-foot line, right. um, that would be a really good to include in the notes for their qualifying score. Um, so in the comment section? Right, yeah, because the comment section, is yeah, there, the comment there, that's, section. that's something we can take into consideration when we're making the divisions that we wouldn't put... Um, you know, an, an athlete in that situation against someone with, you know, a, a lower score. Than yeah, I mean, we've, we've just seen it where, you know, they all have like 20, you know, 2,000 to 2,500. And Yeah, yeah, especially like you're saying, those really high scores. 
qualifying scores. Right. I'm talking. I'm only talking about high ones. Okay. Yeah, and that's probably a good note for any uh, peculiarities or particulars of an athlete's throwing style. If they really can't get it past the 30-foot, 40-foot line mm -hmm. um, reliably, or if for whatever reason they really are only good at a long distance, right. um, that's, that's a good note to add into the comments section um, to give to your GMS registrar. Uh, and uh, that's, one that's point we can take into consideration. Yeah, one point with that also, if the athlete is entered into two different events, please be sure to include that. You can just copy and paste right. um, in, in both of the comments fields. I know Abby's well aware of that as she's the GMS manager for Howard County, uh, but be sure uh, anybody else, uh, please make sure that you tell your or ask your GMS manager to handle that for you. Yeah, I get to be head coach and GMS person. <laughs> you do it all. Mm. Okay, one other thing, and maybe I I missed this somewhere. I when um, nobody throws and the ball is placed, the plena is placed. I didn't think it was being placed on the fifty foot line. Yeah. I thought it was either. Yep. It was everything I've seen is on the fifty foot line, midway between uh, the side the sideboards. Yeah, I thought it was placed on the 30 foot. And I, I don't remember because most of the time we don't get to that point. But Right, right. That's a rare instance. Um, uh, we can go back and review the rules just to confirm. I'm pretty certain about that one. And if another coach wants to, to chime in um, with no. their experience, but I'm pretty sure that it is the 50 foot line um, midpoint. This is Mike Chattis from Anne Arundel County. Uh, it, it is stated as being on the 50-foot line in the in the rules. In the rules, okay. Like yeah, that's, that's what the rules have always been. Sometimes yeah. they do put it on the 30-foot line when everybody's throwing short, just so you know <laughs> they don't have rulers that are that long. Right. Okay. Those were my questions. Thank you. Thanks, Abby. This is uh, Rennie. Um, I've got a couple of questions. Um, who do we contact for the qualifiers? You showed the different qualifiers, but you didn't put any contact. Um, any, we'll be sending out, uh, it may not be in the same email, uh, but the uh, sports calendar, which all the area leaders have, will be including uh, Excuse me, that with the, um, uh, to all coaches as well uh, on this go-round, uh, and that will list the A, whether the qualifier is open to um, folks, uh, any additional folks, or who it is open to. Uh, and then also who the contact information is. So that will be going out uh, again in the next day or so. Um, I'm not sure I understand the comment by who it's open to. Well, in, uh, in some cases, I'll use it as an example, because um, I'm pretty sure the Anne Arundel uh, qualifier has filled. Uh, so um, uh, Anne Arundel is hosting a bocce qualifier. They're also hosting the same day an athletics qualifier. They have a limit of how many of, uh, players that they can handle. Uh, and uh, folks have already uh, contacted them uh, for that. In other cases, it may be that a, uh, a, uh, a qualifier is being held, and I'm making this up here, uh, but uh, Howard County invited Carroll County and Frederick County to join them, um, and that's who that qualifier happens to be open to. So if there is such a thing as that for that particular qualifier, that will be noted, um, and again, as well as who to contact to register. All right, so if, if all of the qualifiers are closed, can a county have, you know, like um, their own internal qualifier in one of their practice and have no one else present? Um, that would need to be a pretty extreme situation because you can always invite someone to come join you, as I noted a moment ago. Um, if you run into that situation where you've done everything you can, uh, to have competition with people other than who the athlete trains with, uh, talk to your regional sports director and we'll see what we can arrange. Uh, but we really want that to be, if, if that is, um, you know, we're going to be appropriately flexible uh, as we can be, um, but uh, that really needs to be the vast or the rare exception uh, rather than the rule. Again, we hope folks will um, host additional qualifiers. It's fairly simple to do so. Uh, you don't have to open it to, like I say, to the world, 
Um, and, uh, and again, you can do sort of a home and away or whatever option as well. Okay. Because right now, the way I look at it is we're rather limited in the number of opportunities for qualifiers. So um, I would suggest that if other counties can um, offer qualifiers, please do, and let's get that word out. Absolutely. That's all I had. Okay. Uh, I should also note that, as with all the summer game sports, I don't know that we did this before, uh, but um, once we have the, uh, all the head coaches or at least all the contact information for the various programs, which we'll have for the most part in the next week or so, we will provide that to all head coaches as well so that you know who to contact in your neighboring counties. Hey, this is uh, Rob Gablinski from Harford County. We're starting out from scratch this year, so I just have a few questions about one of the slides back about medical personnel present for um, tournaments and or practices. What is the definition of a medical personnel? Is that a trained EMT or give me some definition there? Melissa, do you want to take that or do you want me to do that? Uh, I I would uh, be more com comfortable if you would address the okay, thanks, Mike. Sure. Um, it can be a, uh, a a trained EMT. Well, a, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. A licensed EMT or a certified whatever the the, uh, the the certification is for an EMT. Uh, a nurse. Uh, that uh, certainly a doctor would be uh, appropriate. An athletic trainer can serve in that capacity as well. Um, uh, someone who just happened to have taken first aid, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I, I, that's, I, I don't mean that the way that sounded. Someone who has only taken a first aid course does not qualify as, as a medical personnel. It's a wise thing to do. I recommend all coaches take first aid, um, but that wouldn't um, uh, suffice for this. So uh, a, an athletic, a certified athletic trainer, uh, certified or licensed EMT, nurse, doctor, so on down the line would all be appropriate. Okay, thank you. Sure. And then, Mike, if you could elaborate, the coach did ask uh, whether or not the medical personnel needed to be on site for practices. Not for practices, no. Uh, for a qualifier, for a competition, uh, not that bocce is a, a highly, um, uh, it's not a contact sport, at least not that I've seen it be. Um, there's still the possibility for injury and such. So uh, for competitions, for qualifiers, yes, but not for practices. Strongly recommend for any and every coach to get um, uh, your first day training, uh, that is currently not a requirement. Uh, wise thing to do just to be safe, though. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Okay, this is like Janice. I do have one. Do you want to read it? Yeah, one of my athletes this year is uh, in a wheelchair because she's had a broken leg for the last couple of years. When she throws the ball, she doesn't out of the chair. She kind of does a chest. Out. Will that be acceptable? Because that's the only way she can throw it right now. I did not hear exactly what you said, Mike. Could you repeat yourself? She, as far as she used the chair. Wheelchair has to use two hands to throw the ball. She won't lean out of the chair, so she's doing like a chest pass from her chest. It's not below the waist. Is that going to be okay as an adaptation because she just <laughs> lower waist? Um, Sam, do you uh, want to weigh in? I'm not certain of the throwing accommodations that have been allowable. Um, yeah, real real quick note first. Um, please, if you're not asking a question, you can mute your line by hitting star six, I believe. Um, getting a little bit of feedback here. Uh, regarding the throw, um, there's there's been a few accommodations made for athletes. But uh, let's can we uh, another quick reminder if if you have not already, please mute your line, um, especially if you have any. Do you have any background noise or uh, personal 
Um, there is someone that just if if you're not someone has some uh, someone that sounds like someone's sighing. Uh, that if you uh, if that's you on the phone or someone by you on the phone, if you could please mute. That's uh, that's part of the background right there. Um, thank you, Mike. Um, Mike, regarding the throw, I would say that, I mean, a personal opinion, I'll, I'll defer to Mike Zarnowski, of, of course, on a determination. Uh, I think if it's due to an individual's um, physical disability, uh, using a wheelchair, I personally would not see an issue with them doing a not underhand um, roll, but would also be open to hearing other coaches' opinions and thoughts on the topic? Um, just in general, we certainly want to accommodate, and one of the nice things with Bocce is its ability to uh, have uh, a wide variety of ability levels participate, and we certainly want to honor that and uh, embrace that. Um, the, the big question will be, uh, number one, is it absolutely necessary that the athlete throw that way, which it sounds like, Mike, in your case that would be, uh, but then secondly, is the athlete gaining an advantage over, the, uh, over other athletes who are uh, using the proper quote-unquote legal throw? Um, it's one of those things that, uh, um, so I mean, what I would do is talk with uh, your regional sports director or your, um, or uh, Melissa and Sam, uh, talk about the specifics for the athlete, uh, and that could be an accommodation that we certainly would embrace. It, it's kind of a, an open question to make a blanket yes to uh, without having the specifics for the individual athlete, uh, but that's certainly something that I would think we can accommodate um, you know, based on the specifics of the situation. Thank you. Sam, this is Rennie. Um, I want to pick up on what Mike says. You know, for me, it does throwing like this give an advantage to the athlete? And I don't think it would give an advantage. As a matter of fact, I think it would give a disadvantage to the athlete rather than throwing sidewinder. And Abby right. can correct me because she's got a, an athlete in a, in a wheelchair, but I've had athlete also in a wheelchair, and I can tell you, that if David had done that kind of throw from his stomach with both hands, he wouldn't have been able to play the way he did by hanging over the side of the wheelchair. He was yeah, this, much more accurate. Yeah, this is Abby. I, I agree with you, Rennie. I mean, I, I don't see how they'd have an advantage throwing, you know, straight from the waist. And I think um, Mike's point was... Um, Mike from Anne Arundel's point was that, um, you know, it's above the waist, which I don't necessarily have an issue with. I mean, if they can't throw sideways, that's the only way they can throw. Right. And to be honest, this is kind of a new situation. You know, she had competed with us before, not in the wheelchair, but she is a very, very, very weak thrower. I doubt that she's ever going to cross the 30-foot line, no matter how she throws it. Right. So, you know, they, they mainly like to come because they want her to participate in things. Right. And yeah, that's why they're doing it. So I just want to make sure that it wouldn't be a problem with her throwing it in that manner. I know that we've made accommodations in the past when somebody was throwing sidewinder. Yeah, so, so, uh, yeah, so uh, just uh, talk offline specifically and with the specifics with uh, – with Sam and or your regional sports director, and uh, if in their judgment it's it's not an advantage, then I, you're probably right. Uh, I just I, I just don't want to make a blanket. Sure, that's fine because someone will then take that little uh, uh, slightly ajar door and swing it wide open and uh, abuse abuse that statement. So um, with it on a case by case basis, but it sounds like that's something we can definitely accommodate. Somebody would abuse throw, you know, it being above the waist. Right. Yeah, I mean, if you prefer, I can even have her sign up for the light balls. Just yeah, my, uh, Mike, I would go with whatever is maximally challenging for her. Just right. like I say, just talk to uh, to Nick and, and or uh, who's your uh, regional sports director, um, and or Sam and Melissa, um, and uh, again, just get specifics and. Okay. Sure that, that it sounds like that's something that in that at least in that particular situation we can certainly accommodate. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, 
Okay, not hearing any. Um, again, would like to thank all of you for joining us this evening. I uh, realize it's... Uh, this is John it Gallagher is from St. Mary's County. Um, Sam, will there be uh, golf court accommodations for wheelchair-bound players at summer games this year? Um, I will. Uh, I will make a very. Well, I'll uh, let Mike discuss. Mike, do you want to touch base on Burdick at all tonight? Uh, no. Other than um, the, the only thing I will say is there is a possibility that we will be relocating Bocce uh, to a um, uh, another site on campus um, that would eliminate that need. If okay, that, great, great. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, but that, I can tell you, John, if, if we are if we are at the same fields you will still be able to use the golf cart accommodation, yes. Right. Um, so. Well, my question is, will you provide the golf cart? <laughs> ah. Like you did last year. Are you looking to request or avoid a specific driver of said golf cart? No. Uh, <laughs> we don't have a golf cart anymore. So. Um, yes. Um, as in previous years, uh, if we're at the soccer field, we'll have a cart down there on field level, which will be used for um, uh, for exactly that purpose. Okay, great. Thank you very much. There may be a slight delay, but it would still be there. Okay. And for those of you who are sitting there with bated breath wondering what we're talking about and about another site, uh, we'll have a definite answer for you within the next two weeks. So you'll you'll know that. You don't have to wait until the, the pre-competition webinar. We'll inform everyone once we have a chance to assess the opportunity. Oh, we might be back at the student union? I'm not going to say. <laughs> It, it, it makes a big difference, guys, because how we train and how we do our scores, assessments, and turning it in for the year, uh, I would do things differently if I was on a field that's not that soccer field, which has that tight grass, right. sh sh short pile. The if I end up in a blue Kentucky grass... Uh, well, uh, Rennie, we can tell you right now, if the option, if we do, I just don't want to... I want to wait until it's, it's set, but if we do, the alternative option is a turf field uh, with you know, the turf with the um, uh, the individual grass and the, the the black rubber pellet things. Brand new field they've got. Oh, so an artificial turf. Artificial turf. That's the other option. So we will we certainly will get you that information as soon as we have that as soon as we have it available. I'm saying within the next two weeks. It could be as soon as. Tuesday. Um, okay, if, and if we go to artificial turf, I haven't played on artificial turf, but I'm wondering, is that going to be faster than what the soccer field has been? It should be comparable. Hey, Remy, I can tell you, it, it, it's having seen both, it's very comparable to the soccer field. Um, the, the really the advantage on turf, there's, there's a lot of different um, factors to take in, but the advantage of turf is the consistency um, across the board but it's very similar to the soccer field, relatively quick, uh, but yeah, it's different it, than a uh, thick grass field. It, it sounds like either location would be a great location. Uh, yeah, it would. Um, so, again, well, as soon as we know, we're saying within the next two weeks, maybe as soon as uh, Tuesday of next week, uh, when we have a chance to assess it all. Okay, thank you. You're quite welcome. Hi, Mike. This is Chuck Elma. Hi. Um, has there been any thought given between the, the, the wheelchair people and some of the people that aren't too strong? Has there been any thought to forming a division amongst people who just can't throw it past 30 feet and, and uh, making the court and the balls set up accordingly? Uh, there's, uh, well, at least, there's at least six of them that I've seen amongst the various counties. Yeah, I mean, that would, uh, if you're talking about strictly for singles, I think that their, their score would accommodate or would handle that, particularly with the notation that, uh, that Abby had suggested and that Sam endorsed uh, having uh, in GMS. Uh, that would take care of that. Within, with doubles, there's really no realistic way, and we'd have to rely on the scores for the teams to handle that. to your note when you send out the follow-up for the seminar? Sure. Uh, I've already got the email drafted, but I'll add that in. Thank you. Sure.
Okay, thank you again everyone for taking the time to join us this evening. Uh, we're going to go ahead and conclude the session. Uh, you can expect a follow-up email in the next couple days or so uh, with the PowerPoint presentation, uh, some of the particular notes that we've discussed here this evening, and then as well the player assessment uh, instructions for your uh, qualifying scores. Um, if you have any further questions or concerns, please do uh, contact your regional sports director. Uh, they are your primary points of qu contact. And Sam and I um, work with uh, both Melissa and Nick. Um, for those of you who haven't met Melissa yet, uh, this is Melissa Kelly speaking. I am not Melissa Anger. We are two different people, so please note that uh, there were no name changes. Um, so again, look forward to a great season uh, and then uh, another successful summer games. Please uh, let us know if we can be of any assistance whatsoever. And thank you certainly for all of your commitment, effort, time, and expertise in ensuring that our uh, athletes have a, uh, a fulfilling and successful bocce season. So signing off. Uh, thank you again, Mike and Sam as well.